Hi, George here. And today I want to talk about how to resize an image. This is a question that frequently comes up in the comments. People are confused about resizing images, making an image ready for printing on the web or for printing on a regular printer. So I'll be showing you the basic controls where they are, and then you'll have to choose which one is appropriate for your particular use. It's different for every single picture depending upon what your needs are. Let's go ahead and we'll talk through this. One is image size versus canvas size. Now this is a picture right here. And at this point, you see up here, the picture is the same size as the canvas. To explain that, I'm gonna go over here, I'm going to make a new layer over here. I'll put the picture on top. So the background is just a clear layer and the picture is sitting on top. Now if I take that picture and I move it around, what you're seeing back here, this is the canvas. So inside of Photoshop Elements, you have a canvas on the file. That's your basic file size. And then your picture is sitting on top of that or inside of that canvas, inside of that canvas area. Most of the time when you bring a new picture in or open a new picture, you'll be seeing that the picture is the exact same size as the canvas. But they really are two separate things, your image and the canvas. Now, one way you can resize an image is if you go up and grab a corner and pull down, you're changing the size of the image, but you're keeping the canvas the same size. This is called scaling an image, and it's used whenever you're doing montages, things like that. You may want to have your image a different size. Maybe you have two or three images in here. The kind of thing I'm doing all the time for thumbnails for YouTube. Click that X and cancel that one out. You find that same control up here under image and resize here, your resize controls, and right here, scale, exact same thing. It just brings up those control handles, and you can then change the size of the image on your canvas. Okay, I'll cancel that. You also can change the size of your canvas. And if I go back up here to image, resize, and canvas size, this is the size of the actual image area in here that your image can fit into. If I make the canvas larger, the image isn't gonna fit the size of the canvas. So go over here, let's just change this to percent. And I'll change my height and width to 120%. So that the canvas is now bigger then the picture, and notice down here it says anchor. This is the point that the canvas is gonna be stretching. So I get a similar size clear around here. I could make it stretch from the top and it will just stretch down and to the right, in which case the top left would stay the same and the new canvas would come in over here and over here where those arrows are pointing to. Most of the time, having a centered is the right choice. Choose okay. And if I just back out a little bit, you can see now the canvas size is larger. I didn't make the image any smaller, I made the canvas larger. And that's useful if you want to maybe add in a border or something, you can choose what you wanna do on that. Sometimes your picture comes in and it's the wrong size for what you wanna do. And you wanna make a canvas at a specific size, like a five by seven, maybe you have a four by six image, you want a five by seven picture, but you don't wanna change your image size. That's what you do when you would change your canvas size. I'll use a control Z keyboard shortcut just to undo and back out of that. If I also made this thing smaller, so if the canvas was smaller than the picture, then the canvas size would cut off the edges of the picture. You wouldn't see part of the picture. Let me demonstrate that. Image, resize, canvas size. Let's now make this 90%, both width and height. Choose OK. And it's going to be giving you a warning that the canvas size is now smaller than the image, so some clipping of the image is going to happen. Choose Proceed. You can see there. We still have the image size out here. That's the actual full image, but the canvas is only showing just part of that image. So your canvas size also determines how much of the image is gonna be showing on your final project. Now that picture is still here. I can move it around. I can see the rest of that picture in there. So you can go larger or smaller on your canvas and your picture is still sitting on top of that canvas. Okay, let's do Control Z and back out of that. There we go. Now the other way to look at this is if you wanted to make the whole thing, canvas and picture, bigger or smaller at the same time. And you can do that. And that's up here, image, come down to resize. That's image size right here. And this is gonna be changing the image size and the canvas at the same time. So if I made this larger, everything would get bigger. Let's change this here to percent again. Let's make this 120%, leave everything else the same, and choose okay. And notice how the image is bigger and the canvas is bigger. They both change size at the same time. Okay, let's now back out of that control Z, go back up here to image resize and image size. And let's take a look at the rest of these options up in here. Notice that we have two things in here. We have pixel dimensions and we have document size. 
Consider document size as being the printed size of this image. Whether you're printing onto a printer or thinking of it a different way, printing it onto a web page. That's your document size. That's the actual size of the image. Now the pixel dimensions up here is going to depend upon your resolution. So what this size here is this number multiplied by the resolution. So it's how many pixels are inside of each inch. So this is six inches across here. Here's our one inch line. Let's get this out of here for just for a second. If I go to the ruler and drag a guideline in here, set that right at one inch, then at 300 pixels per inch, there are 300 pixels inside here. It's a lot of detail. If I zoomed in, I'd be able to count 300 little squares clear across there. Let's just zoom in real fast. There you go. You can really see those pixels in there. So in a 300 pixel image, you have 300 of these pixels in one inch of image. Control zero to go back to fit screen. Let's go back up here to image again and resize image size. So if I change this to 72, a couple things happen. Notice that the width and height of the document didn't change, but the resolution changed and our pixel dimensions change because there are fewer pixels per inch. So this is going to be an image with less detail in it. Normally when you're making images for use on the internet, 72 is a good number. You want to have a smaller file size. If you look at our file size up here, or 14.6K. If I set this up here to 300 pixels per inch, all of a sudden this is 7.3 megabytes. So it's a much larger file size if I have more pixels per inch. Each pixel takes up a little bit of image size. So the smaller your pixel dimensions, the smaller your resolution, the smaller the image is going to be. And that's what you want for use on the internet. You want to get these things as small as possible so that the page loads fast. Also, when you're on the internet, looking at real fine detail is normally not that big of a deal. It's normally not a real big issue. Now, if you are printing something out, let's set this back up here to 300. This is about four times larger than a 72 pixel inch. So if I went from 72 to 300, I had to be adding in three more pixels, three new pixels between every pixel that we had in the 72 inch. So Photoshop Elements has to bring that from someplace. And it does that down here with the resample image. Basically, just take a look at this and go by what it says. If you're enlarging your image, go for best for enlargement. If you're reducing your image, making it smaller, go for best for reduction. Now, the scale styles and constraint proportions. Styles is if you've applied layer styles onto your image and you want those to stay in proportion. Constraint proportions means that if I change one of these dimensions, the width or the height, the other one will change along with it. So if I made this one five, Notice how this comes down and changes so that the proportion of your image stays the same. So when I'm resizing an image, I know what I want to go to, what my final output is, and I don't really worry about what's up here as much. So for printing, I'll pay attention to what's down here. You want 300. Keep in mind, whenever you change something in here, and this is the most important part of this discussion actually is, whenever you change anything in here and choose OK, it will result in a slight loss of quality. There's no way around that. And that's because if you change anything here, Photoshop Elements has to go in and relook at the image and either add in or subtract pixels to fit your new image sizes. And when you do that, you're gonna be losing image quality. So whenever you make any change on image size, you will lose some quality. That normally means that the image will be a little bit softer. Just keep that in mind. You don't wanna do a whole lot of changing. Change it once and then leave it at that. The more changes you do, the softer the image is going to be going. Now, if I was taking this picture here for print, let's say I wanted to have this at a four by six, I'll come down here, I'll change this to a six like that, and it's almost four, that's close enough. So that's my four by six, and I would have my resolution at 300. That's not much of a change, very small change this time, but I'm going a little bit smaller, just slightly. So I do it by cubic sharper for reduction. Leave all this the same, all this checked, and then choose OK, then would be reduced down to that size for printing. And the basic thing to keep in mind is for printing onto paper, your standard printing, you want 300 pixels per inch, and they match your document size. And for the internet, you want 72 pixels per inch, and you want a smaller size. And that's the thing over here, this reveal all. If I take this image, make the image bigger like that. So my image is now too big for the canvas size. Go up to image, resize, reveal all. And notice how the canvas size was grown to match the image size. So that's what that last fast fix option is right there.
If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to learn this program is watching my channel, of course, but also getting my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I cover everything, all the tools, all the menus, all the panels, everything in the program. I also talk about the organizer and how to use the organizer. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Take a look at that. I think you'll find what you want there on how to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. I'm doing new videos all the time. And I'll see you next time.